And this one's going no. Just press the green. No, oh, that's raise. <coughs> Record. Yeah. And we're off. Okay, the uh, Protection and Welfare Committee for Monday, June 12, 2017, City Hall Room 207. It's 5 a, uh, p.m. and we will begin. Uh, Alder Dorf is here. Uh, myself, the chair. Alder Scandal is here. I have not heard from Alder Zima or Alder Gallant, so I'm assuming they will be popping up very soon. Uh, in the meantime, Alder Nenig has uh, volunteered to sit in, so we have a quorum and we can begin. Uh, two, I'll take an approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Uh, all in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. That passes. Three, approval of the minutes from May 8th, 2017. Move to approve. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Alder Dorf. Uh, motion, move those, and uh, then uh, second both those, and let's uh, move on to uh, item number four. Consideration with possible action on a request by Ardvark Wine Lounge, 304 Pine Street, to amend their liquor license to include outdoor seating serving in the city right of way. Contingent on the adoption of Sidewalk Cafe Ordinance at the June 20th City Council meeting. Yeah. So, uh, I guess they already had their they already had their revocable occupancy permit approved by INS, so they're going to go on that. So this would be approving the um, Alcohol be alcohol license to be extended to the right way. Right. There's no you know, recommendation here. No okay. objections. Anything from you concur? I uh, concur. No, obje okay. no objection. Okay. We're, on, we're on number four. We just started. Uh, Alder Galvin has now joined us, and Alder Nenik is back in his comfortable seat in the, <laughs> in the audience. So we still have our quorum. Uh, item four. Yep. Okay. Uh, any discussion? How does this stand with the new ordinance that we're trying to develop for second lock cafes? So this is in, I guess, conjunction with that, or it works along with it, where um, if that gets approved on June 20th, then that sidewalk cafe ordinance will be adopted and published by June 23rd, okay. and then they'll be able to serve alcohol right away by June 23rd. But we grant this now? Yep, it's it, continued. It's continued. Yeah. It's, it's continued. It says it's okay. continued, yep. So, and if it doesn't pass? Yeah, I mean, this would not pass. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move to approve. Motion approved by Alder Dorf, second by Alder Galvin. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, item number five. Consideration with possible action on a request by the owner of Brewski's on Broadway, 1100 South Broadway to have an outdoor event on July 8th, 2017. Staff. No objections, sir. Police Department doesn't have any objection either. However, we would like to know the type of fencing and uh, type of uh, security they plan to have on the site. Okay. Uh, is anyone here for this item? <coughs> Do you mind? Shall I move to open the floor? Oh, okay. Motion open the floor by Elder Dorf. Second. Second by Elder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the floor is now open. Please state your name and address. Randy Tremel. At 1100 South Broadway. Okay, and uh, I, I got, yeah, the usual fencing, a little five foot high fencing, and I got my, and I'm not sure what usual fencing is. Well, the, it's four foot fencing, and I think you keep it off the ground a foot, so it's, it's five foot high. And it's, you know, it's, it's the snow fencing. Okay. And then and I got security, people wearing security shirts and stuff on for people that are coming in and out. Are the security uh, licensed and, and bonded and certified and all that? Or where are they security from? Well, they're, they're actually bartenders that, that aren't working and stuff. That are going out there making sure that they're, everybody's old enough and that kind of stuff. Um, from what company or what business? From, from my business. business. Also, did your personal yeah, officers? Yeah. Okay. Basically, I'm sure that. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, anything mm -hmm. else you care to add? <coughs> Any questions? Uh, are you uh, having uh, music? No. Just a birthday party. They just wanted more room to, so they could, you know, smoke and stuff outside or whatever. And I'm not, I'm not, park, I'm not fencing off the whole parking lot. Just, sure. Just a small little area for them. Sure. Mm -hmm. And what time do you anticipate it shutting down? Before dark. Before, oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. 
Maybe sing happy birthday though, right? No, probably be on the jukebox <laughs> four or five times. <laughs> uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. Motion to return to regular order. Thank you. Okay, so right. Motion to be all there. No, to turn to order. Uh, second to be all there. Alvin, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay, mm -hmm. Alder Zimmer has just joined us. We are on item number five. Move to approve. Second. Move to approve by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Galvin. Is there anything you wish to get caught up to speed on uh, Alder Zimmer? Or? Good. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries unanimously. <coughs> uh, item number six. Consideration with possible action on a request by the owner of the sardine can, 128 South Broadway, to hold an outdoor event on June 14, 2017. The City Council has granted final authority to the Protection Welfare uh, Committee regarding this request. So uh, everything else, I should have stated before, everything else we do is just a recommendation. Nothing is final until next Tuesday at Council. Council has the final word. However, with this <coughs> particular item, since it's going to happen before Council meets, we will have the final authority on this item. But all others, it's just a recommendation to council that will happen next Tuesday, 7 o'clock, in the room next door. Uh, staff? No objections to The uh, communication talks about this event being held in the parking lot and the road area. So uh, I'd like to know if this is planning on covering the road or, uh, or what have you. Okay. Okay. Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor. <coughs> Motion by Elder Door, second by Elder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Door is now well, open. They communicated you? with me about it. They were talking about from the alleyway to Broadway, that half of the street. I, I could correct it though. Mm -hmm. Well, please state your name and address. Uh, Brian, uh, we're at 120 South Broadway, the Sardine Can. Thank you for letting us come in today. Um, yes, we're, we've asked to shut off the blocking between our residence and, and the school building, essentially. Um, we'll have a barricade right at the corner of Broadway so as not to anything on Broadway and then essentially at that alley will stop access way so I know we met with the city I think two weeks ago and talked about the outdoor permit the goal is we're just gonna have a flatbed trailer that that'll actually abut the sidewalk that people will still be able to get through and drive through and then the band will play there and then at 10 o'clock the band will be done and then we'll clean up the, that road area from that standpoint we're looking specifically to go outside of our area of business though to serve alcohol you got a permit from who to block off the street uh, we, because we know there's two separate permits. There's one to actually hold the the event, and then there's one to actually have the liquor license outside. So okay. we met with this with a, a different group of city special people, event. special events, probably about two three weeks ago. They they approved both so permits, right? essentially one with alcohol, one without alcohol, depending on what you guys decide to do tonight. Nice. And you're shutting it off, or you're going to serve alcohol outside your normal area for how long? Um. Um, from our, our opening business that day, probably around noon until 10 o'clock, when we shut down the band at that point in time and clean up, up the street. And the alley is also closed? No, the alley will be fully open. The alley is just that street? Yep, yep. So it'll be on the front side of the alley and the front side of Broadway. All right. And as always, we have issues with your music and the neighbors. How are we going to solve that problem? Um, we, we have purchased decimal meters, so we will definitely make sure we're on it specifically that night, but all, all nights, make sure that we're on it. decibels? I, off the top of my head, I don't know. I know we have it written on the machine, but I, I can't off the top of my head tell you. And have you had some conversation with the school board? Uh, we know that they're out from that standpoint, but we have not, because we'll probably take up a handful of parking blocks on that, that The Central alley. office is never. Yeah. Out, <laughs> the kids are out of mm -hmm. school, but they they'd be working. I just would think it would be appropriate to have some conversations. Yeah, we can stop by. We can definitely stop by there tomorrow. Let them know. Not that would be a very good idea. Dan Boyle, with a loudspeaker. Anything else? Any other questions? Anything else you care to add? Mm, no, thank you. Hopefully, we'll we're good to go. To thank you. To regular Motion to return to regular business by Elder Dorf. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'll take a motion. <coughs> motion approved. Second. Motion by Alder Zim to approve. Seconded by Alder Dorf. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, carries unanimously. Thank you and very much. You're good to go. This is final. Perfect. Thank you, Kim. We'll yep. meet tomorrow morning. Yep. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number seven, consideration with possible action and appeal by Brandon DeBear uh, to the denial of his operator license application staff. I'd break my denial. 
police department as well. Whenever it says operators, I we assume that that's tavern operator. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you'll always say vehicle if it's a taxi or something. Yep. That's Well, it is a motion to move do, do you have it in the background? Yep. <coughs> I'll I don't think there's too much there, though, for... It's not in, in your packet. Yeah, there's not much. Uh, is Brandon here? Oops. No Brandon. He's not here. So he was notified? Yeah. <coughs> He's the one that made the appeal, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's in the packet. Well, let's just hold it to let's the end of our it. agenda, and if it shows up uh, good, if it doesn't, uh, okay. Motion to hold to the end, hold this item till. Uh, we'll to to the to to Do we need to make yes, a motion to okay. amend the agenda and all that, or make motion to hold number seven until we get to the end of our agenda? Someone seems to have to say. Is oh. that for for um, operating for our cab driver's license? No. 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 Okay. No. no. This is. Yeah. And make a motion to hold till the end of the year. Second. Yeah. That's oh. Or second. Yeah. Oh, second. Okay. okay. All resume made a motion to hold this item to to uh, the end of our item. It becomes 22. Second by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That item now goes to the end of our agenda. <laughs> item number eight. Consideration of possible action on appeal by Angel Duvall to the denial of her operator license application. Staff? We'll defer to the police department. <laughs> oh. The uh, basis for the denial on May 17th is because the uh, party had an active arrest warrant. I ran her name prior to coming here, it's no longer active. Um, so, therefore, we would rescind her. Okay. Yeah. Move to approve. I'll second that. Motion by Alder Dorf to approve. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, that uh, license has been approved. Uh, item number nine. Consideration of possible action on an appeal by Antoine Haynes to the denial of his public vehicle operator license application. <coughs> this we have some information on. Uh, staff? Uh, a lot of time recommends to know. That's the police department. So all of, all of this was, uh, is, there, is this where there's some? Mm -hmm. It's all, but it's some of it. But some of it some is, is duplicate. It's duplicate, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, why. The seat cap and that's why it comment. seems so. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask what forfeiture was, but there's forfeiture. Yeah. I didn't didn't see that until <laughs> I you showed me. Forfeiture is kind of nice. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, is uh, Mr. Haynes here? Yeah. Uh, Move to open the <coughs> Well, they do to open the floor. <coughs> That's a lot of trees. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Is there a summary of the whole thing? Yep, on, yep. This. on, on, on this. What he handed out. It's on the second page. Yeah. Right oh. there. I just want to look at that for a second. Yep. Does anyone have any questions, or would you just like? Just, I'd questions? like to hear a statement first. Oh, I don't, I don't, I just don't know pretty much why I got denied. I mean, I drove a cab from Florida for a year and a half ago. I moved back from Florida back to Green Bay, and I'm disabled. And um, a friend of mine was, a friend guy say he was hiring for cab drivers, so I applied, and I got denied. And first, I was going to know why, basically. Oh. Uh, the state was. Just, said, I'm sorry. Oh, the second I got a felony. I know. Yeah, I know. I do know that, but it's 13 years ago. Right. So. Well, it, it, and that's where it's good you appealed it. 
because uh, the state of Wisconsin has state statute that says anyone with a felony is automatically denied. But it does give us some wiggle room in the way the law is written as it, as it uh, applies <coughs> to the license, how it relates to the license. So uh, you may have a basis for an appeal here. It was a while ago that the felonies occurred. I noticed that. Yeah. There's been some uh, other uh, uh, learnings with the law after that, but uh, it's the felonies that the state statutes uh, is concerned with, and those were, uh, the last one was in 05. 05. Right. So, uh, you're quite how young are, with the How are the things the different today than they were then? Um, that was a different life back then. I was kind of younger, running the streets, whatever. I got a different life now. I'm disabled now. I can't work anymore. It's weird. I shift. I worked at a lot of restaurants. Um, I got custody of my granddaughter now, and I live my life and take care of my granddaughter. It'd be nice to make a little extra money besides the disability money. So I was nice to have a little extra money, and that's the only thing pretty much I can do as far as working a job. So I applied for it because I, I drove in Florida. A year and a half ago, two years ago, for like a year and a half. What actually caused you to lose your license back in, what, 2011 or? 2011, uh, probably tickets. Well, it says it, it, it tickets. looks like you got suspended. Yeah, because the price of, oh, 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 not a pen, it's a ticket, old ticket or something. So I never had like a case where I was driving up, just always had like, and before I even had my license, I probably had tickets prior to that. So that's probably what happened. But I have my license now for the last, I don't know, six, seven years old. Well, you were operating while suspended in 2012, so that'd be five years. Right. Well, that's what it says here. Green Bay Municipal okay. Court shows you received a citation for operating while suspended. And it had to, it had to be probably like an unpaid ticket, it had to be. So they were like caught a case or nothing. It was had to be on a paid ticket or something. So obviously you have insurance now. Yes. You have a valid. No, license. I have insurance now, but I got a valid. Yes, I got a valid driver's license. Don't you have to have insurance? Yeah, I just got a car though, like last month. Just bought a yeah. just got a car from Doris Ford. So, and I'm working on getting it now. I'm just trying to think the plan that can go that I can afford it. So now that you've got your granddaughter, you've got that responsibility. You've given up having open intoxicants in your car. Definitely. Which was only a year ago. Hmm? When I was 2016 out of Union County. You were cited. No, that's no, oh, Angel. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. Angel. You skipped up. Oh, sorry. My bad. Oh, I was going to say that one. Right here. All right. Yeah. I did that too, but I can't. All right. Ah. All right. I apologize. No problem. <coughs> so it appears to me the last time that you had any tickets operating without insurance operating while suspended was in 2012 right. so it's been well, five years since anything happened. Yes. and much longer for the felonies yes. and the felonies was in 05 yeah. so I would okay I don't have any more questions do you have any questions so you kept your record clean for the last five years yes, I have. Yeah. People change. And you're trying, trying to uh, get a letter from your employer that says that he's willing to hire you? I don't have an employer because I didn't get the license. So I was denied for it because I didn't have the R car to drive a license. I mean, drop cap. And because I didn't get the license, they hired me. But what, what company is this? So? Anytime cap. Anytime cap? Yeah, that's the name of the company. I'm familiar with that. It's, he said it's a new company. They've been on it. He said maybe. Between nine months to a year, and I just came out. I know there are in some cabs that have been driving without having their vehicles inspected. They don't have the seals in the back. I, I'm not familiar with this company, though. Oh, so. I mean, I got the number in him. I'm going to verify that with him. He's been calling me, so. He doesn't need to be working for a company to apply for a cab driver's license. Mm -hmm. He could get one in advance of or anticipating getting a job. And that's what I think. You, know, you okay. got to have a hard sure. car to even drive a license. I mean, <coughs> drive a license. <coughs> All right. Well, I'd be willing to give a chance. Uh, the condition that he. Well, but question. Should we? Oh, okay. 
Should we close the floor? I don't have any more questions. Anything you'd like to add? No, I'm, I'm fine. I stated what I had to say. <laughs> okay, All right. Thank you. Then motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Alder Dorf, second by Alder Gavilan. Gavilan, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the floor is closed. We'll talk it over and we'll let you know. Okay, thank you. The motion to so what, this way, or you guys? Just, just wait. This way, okay. Yep, yep. Won't take long. And make a motion to so grant the application, providing he, he shows a received application for employment from a cab company that's in good standing with the city of Green Bay. <coughs> okay. I. I, really I just don't want a loose cannon out there, that's all. Well, I, and I, I understand that, but um, if, if we're going to start putting that restriction on every license we give out, and, and granted we want cabs companies to be properly licensed and insured and uh, vetted by the police department and the law department, but um, I mean it's on him. If he goes and he gets a license for a cab company that's not properly licensed, he's putting himself in trouble of losing his license, especially if he's caught driving a cab, correct? correct. That's not uh, that's not licensed properly, and then we pull his license at that time. But, um, so does that fail for lack of a second? Uh, I'm just not comfortable doing I'm, that. I'm not I, I have no problem about uh, well, I granting him whatever license. suggestions you have. I just thought to dispose of it, there's been a seems like a clean record for five years and right yeah, oh, I just asking, like to ask, ask, ask you to be able to drive the vehicle I, I'm just more concerned that there actually is a job there and and, and that, it, that it's a cab company that is in good standing with the city of Green Bay right that's not just uh, some rogue operator out there because I understand there are a few but uh, I don't think that's what we're here to talk about I think we're here to talk about his license not so I, I'm very comfortable with, with well, moving we, we to put, approve. We can put conditions on them. If, and if we want to, I, I don't want to. I, well, okay, I, I'm not arguing that part of it. But okay. uh, that was just my suggestion. Mm -hmm. You folks can do whatever you want. Is there another motion? Yes, I'd like to move to approve um, his, to approve his operator license. Motion by Alder Dorf. And I'll second. Second by Arnold Gavin. Um, yeah, I, I think it's on a cab, co you know, cab company, uh, and who knows, perhaps, if uh, he may get a job with a different cab company, perhaps, once he's got it. Uh, so, well, whatever, whatever, whatever you might want to check out that company, make sure. <laughs> well, whatever cab company would be okay with me, but uh, yep. I, I, uh, I don't think we should just hand out licenses to people that don't really have a job. Well, but well, like he said, I the way it works is when you apply, he has a chance to do it. Right. <coughs> like he said, he lost the job because he didn't have a license in hand when he applied for the job. So, but all he has to do is uh, show that he's got it, got it conditional. If he presents a letter from an employer <coughs> that says that uh, he'll take it, then I think you're we're home free. If he doesn't, well, I don't know. He can't get the license until he's got, you know. Uh, we very often ask that you know, people, people have extensive records in the back that their employers are aware their past and they're willing to hire them and I always felt that they're willing to then I'm, I'm willing to give them second chances okay. well in this case for myself I'm, I'm uh, comfortable that the felonies happened quite some time ago he's quite a young man for uh, the first two and um, uh, he, as far as I feel comfortable with him driving for any cab so um, I'm not too worried about uh, his on his end the cab company, you never know, but that uh, I don't think so much on him or a part of what we're doing here right now. So uh, I'm all for uh, granting his uh, appeal. Shall we vote? Well, I, just, mm -hmm. uh, I just find it kind of irregular. You have your two departments uh, recommending against it. Well, that's you, want, you want to approve it without any conditions whatsoever? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that our new standard? It depends. Pace got pace. <coughs> and uh, that we have two departments, they will automatically, when there's a felony, deny it. That's their job. So it's it's our job to then sift through and interpret the law as to uh, 
should it be enforced or is this indeed an exception and we can uh, grant his license? I think this is an exception. I think time is a factor that relates to uh, the job and uh, uh, I am really only concerned about the felonies. Uh, I can appreciate everybody else has taken a look at everything else, but the law doesn't mention any other violations. It mentions felonies. And so that's all I'm concerned with. Everything else, it's his life it's his good luck and uh, I wish him the best and uh, if he has another run-in with the law he has a run-in with the law and the consequences follow from that I mean uh, I feel comfortable that following the law that uh, his case is exceptional those felonies are old I don't think they're applicable anymore they no longer relate and that's all I'm concerned with that's the only reason he's here is because of the law it just strikes me that from 2010 to 2012, he has an abundance of violations that were directly related to his works. I, 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 I'm perfectly willing to approve it with the stipulation that he showed that he has a responsible company to work for. And <coughs> that's what I'm going to present to the council if I go there. I'm, Okay. I'm not opposed to this gentleman having a license. <coughs> I just think that uh, you just can't come and get a license without without really having a, a, a company that's willing to hire him. Well, I would argue if uh, he's disabled, he sees uh, cab driving as a possibility of something he can do, and if this company didn't work out, perhaps he would shop around and, and drive for another company. So, again, I, at that end of the job, I'm not... Uh, I don't feel it's uh, I need to be involved in that in any size, shape, or form. Nothing's uh, preventing him from shopping and finding a company. We're not telling him what company he's got to work for. I'm not telling him that he's got to do it for the one that he applied to. He can get it from anybody. Whoever is giving him a job, if it's a company in good standing, then I'm, I'm willing to approve it. Well, and, I, and I understand your concern because there was that one company that the police department was all over for years that kept skating around the rules and they kept getting cited and recited and shut down and they were operating illegally all the time. But they'll make him responsible. And I think there's a couple like that now. Well, and, and that's a possibility. We've heard stuff about out at the airport and stuff, although that's out in Brown County. But to hold him responsible for that, I, I don't think is, is correct. I, I think our job is maybe to ask the police department to start investigating and maybe report back to us on what cab companies are registered with the city and then do some checking and see if there's other cab companies that are operating out there illegally and work to shut that down that way. Um, but to make him check with every cab company that he applies to see if they've got all their rules and everything dots, you know, the, the T's crossed, the I's dotted, make sure they got all their licensing and everything or if the cabs are inspected properly. I, I don't think that's putting that responsibility on him. I don't think is correct. And I'm not putting that responsibility on him. I'm putting the responsibility on him is to find a cab company that's in good standing that has a license from the city of Green Bay. Now, whether some of them are skating around the license in some way, as long as they have a license, that's all. I, and you folks can make it as easy as you want, but I you set a standard that you've got to live by for everybody then. So. No, I, we can, this is a case-by-case -case affair. <coughs> we <coughs> judge by case-by-case. -case. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, again, this is just a recommendation. Tuesday, 7 o'clock will be the final. Okay. And it sounds like uh, Alder Zimmel will be going <coughs> to council, so you probably need to be there. At when is it? 7 o'clock. Next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. This, this coming Tuesday? Nope, next door. Uh, the next door, yeah. Maybe bring a letter if... If you do have a company to work for, but... Right. wouldn't hurt. Like I, like I was saying, you can't even get a company until you have the car. Right. Yes, so right. they know. But if I had to bring a letter, I will get a letter from But you can have a letter from them saying they're willing to hire you if we grant them a license. No license. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Okay, uh, item number 10. Consideration with possible action on an application for a Class A beer and Class A liquor by Mi Favorita Supermarket, LLC, at 1908 East Mason Street. Staff. No objections. 
No concerns. Um, okay. Move to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, item number 11, consideration with possible action on an application for a Class B combination license by Christine Dean at 1689 East Mason Street, currently 7 after. Staff? No objections. No concerns. You concur? No, no concerns. <laughs> <laughs> Move to approve. Move to approve by Alder Dorn. <coughs> second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Item number 12. Consideration is possible action on an application for a Class B combination license. Guillermo's LLC at 850 Kepler Drive, Suite C. Currently El Jarabeo LLC. That? No concerns. I concur. Move to approve. Move to approve by Alder Dorf. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Um, item 13. Consideration of possible action on an application for a Class B combination license by Funkay's BC's LLC at 617 Limekiln Road. Currently, BCs. I bet that's just funks. Uh, yeah. No objections. And we have no concerns either. It's his turn. <laughs> Motion approved. Motion approved Second. by Alder Galvin. Seconded by Alder Dorf. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Item number 14, consideration of possible action on an application for a Class B combination license by V3 Entertainment, LLC, at 2056 Main Street. Currently, DNS Entertainment, LLC. Staff? No objections. <coughs> None for me. Okay, before we go any further, I'd just like to put it into the record that Alder Weary uh, supports this. He sent an email uh, stating that he'd like that uh, added to the record. And Okay, move to approve. Move to approve by Alder Dorf. This isn't. This isn't in his. This no, it's not in his district. No, no. Think, but he's. Must know them or so. I don't know. I didn't get the email. I mean, it makes him former leader of the hot pot. So just be like a part of the gas station yeah. complex. Yeah. Okay. All right. Motion by Alder Dorf to second. accept. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Item number 15, consideration with possible action on an application for a Class B combination license by GB Entertainment, LLC, at 1100 Main Street, <coughs> currently Oval Office, LLC. Staff? No objections. I concur. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Uh, motion by myself, uh, seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries. Number 16, consideration of possible action on an application for an adult <coughs> entertainment license by GB Entertainment, LLC, at 1100 Main Street, currently Oval Office, LLC. Staff. No objections. No concerns. I'm just wondering why these are separate. Isn't this sort of like a renewal? Aren't these the last two? Are this one and the last one? Aren't these like renewals? Or do they change names? Or I'm just wondering why it's separated out here. Well, one's for, well, one's for the adult entertainment license. <coughs> yeah, there's for the liquor license. Yeah. That is that under new management now? Is that, or different owners or something? Or different company? Or I guess I'm, you know, normally we have a list here of licenses mm -hmm. that are normally redone this time of year. I just know why these are singled out. Why are they separate on our agenda? I'm not sure. 
kind of guesses well, I, they changed ownership. I don't know. I mean, they currently hold licenses, don't they? I believe so. No. Yes, they must. Yeah, I'm just <coughs> wondering why this is separated out on our agenda. Well, there's two different licenses. Well, I think that's why it's. It, he's yeah. asking if it's a, if it's merely a renewal. Why is why it is here? It? Which makes leads me to believe it's uh, uh, ownership. Ownership, ownership or management. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's here's a it note says that says DB Entertainment. No, here, here's a note that says subsequent to closing the purchase, no later than seven fifteen and seventeen. So it looks like uh, it's being purchased. So the operation is being sold to, to somebody. The, probably the gentleman that's uh, applying for the... Uh, have, have we checked out the new people? I believe the individual is here today. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to understand it. Motion to open the floor. Motion to open the door, open the floor. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. 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 If you could yep, just please state your name and address. <coughs> Kevin Weaver. 1021 Lucerne in Menasha. Okay. Well, is there any yeah, questions over there, Zimmer? Are, are you a new owner of the building then? Yeah. I'm the uh, I'm the agent on the application. So this is just a change of agent then? It'll be a change of ownership. But I'm uh, yeah, the, the agent will change over. The sale is contingent upon all the licensing going through. But uh, is there a new application, new persons in? Uh, do we know how new the new officers are? Yeah, they're in the application. It's, um, Something from the mansion. They've all been that, that's vetted here. Yeah, there's a name and a driver's license photocopy. And that's not much. I don't think. Are the new owners here? No. Who are the new owners? Well, GB Entertainment is the corporation. Is that what you're... GB? We're asking for the names? Oh. I mean, do you know who you're working for? Yes. Yeah, we're just asking for the names. Yeah, uh, well, the Neela is, is the guy that I work with the most, but there's two other guys, Conan and Shital. Yeah. But that's their little partnership. Eva's last name's about this long. Yeah, I saw that. It is quite, yes. Yeah. I won't try to pronounce it. <laughs> I call him Neela. And we were able to find these individuals in the system. Yeah, there was, <coughs> I don't believe there was anything. Like we didn't have anything. Yeah. So <coughs> Going from local ownership to unlocal, do these folks live in Green Bay? Pardon me? Do these people live in the area? I'll be moving up here when the sale. I'll be up I'm in the area. I'm talking about the owners. Um, one of them lives in uh, uh, Milwaukee, <coughs> down by Milwaukee. And then uh, I think the other two live just across the, in Illinois. We have a club up here already uh, in Menasha that we run as part of our group. You'll be managing it then? Or? Yes. Okay. May I ask how many years you've been in the industry there? 15 years in the industry. Second. No other questions? Anything else you'd like to add? No. Okay. <coughs> Motion to by Alder Zimmer to close the floor. Second by Alder Dorf. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'll take a motion. Motion approved. Motion approved by Alder Galvin. Just add to that with the approval of proper authorities. 
So a second with the approval <coughs> by the proper <coughs> authorities. Is that the second? The recommendation of proper authority, Jim. Yeah. Proper so authorities. <coughs> I don't have any objections to it. <coughs> okay, so we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, that uh, passes three to one. So uh, next Tuesday, <coughs> seven o'clock, we'll be fine. I don't feel strong enough about what I'm saying. Feel so an extension? I feel this is a mysterious application. So I uh, are you abstaining then, sir? Yeah. Okay. So two yes, one no, one abstention. The Who is the second on that? Uh, you seconded? I think I did. Oh, I thought. Alders. Oh, no, Alders Limited. Alders Limited. Yeah, Alders Limited. Yep. Okay. So you're no and you're well, abstaining because you want more information. information. Of yeah. Proper authorities, because I'm just assuming somebody's really vetted this. Well, I mean, is there people don't even live in the state and they've got an agent well I think the protection welfare committee if you I don't have the ordinance number on this but for adult entertainment licenses that goes to the protection welfare committee so this would be the proper authority to approve or deny it and there's a business plan attached here that was submitted by the prior owners which I believe um, I think you can ask the, the new owner the agent um, I'm assuming they're going to adhere to that same business plan that was approved for the prior owners. I think that's why it's that's correct. Here. So I and the sale is what in July, I believe. Yes, right? July. I understand there's only one meeting a month, so I don't know if, if you guys want more time. Then we'll call another meeting, but then after another common council meeting, it's it's up to your. You guys are the authority to approve it or not. Just a, these are controversial type businesses, <coughs> and when the owners are not, some of them don't even live in the state. And you just wonder about the legitimacy. Do you have a, something you'd like to check or have staff check then to determine legitimacy, or if there's any how, shenanigans? How, how, thorough, or? how thorough a check was it? Well, I have read the business plan before, but. I have not checked out the establishment itself to see if they're complying with it, so I, you know, that's, I don't think that's been well, done. I'm not talking about the people that have the license. Mm -hmm. Background checks. Yeah. They want to move the license. Yeah, we've done the background checks. Yeah. 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 And they're absolutely perfectly clear. Yeah, I'm I met with the officers last week and submitted a security plan. I think you should have that. Well, it's just when owners aren't in the area, they're not really watching their properties. <coughs> they can hire people, but we we get people with liquor licenses all the time. But and when they're not responsible and they leave it in the hands of other people, that's when we usually have problems. This is a, this is a very large investment, and you know they're they're planning on being up here a lot, and. Uh, with the, with the sale going on right now, the problem is that we haven't, nothing is complete yet. So <clears throat> we're trying to get the, this done and then worry about the accommodations afterwards. You know, I'm, I'll be moving into the area and I, I believe they're, they're gonna purchase a home up in this area as well. Do, do we wanna open the floor again? Yes, for sure. Motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor. Open the floor. Second. Second. My elder Zuma. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Technicality, but uh, so is there any other concerns, Elder Zuma? Well, there's a lot of negative things connected with, with this type of industry, and some are better operators than others, etc. And um, I, I just register concern when I don't see owners here to present themselves. Ownership, you know, a lot tells tells me a lot. It's just the way people present themselves. And we have everything we really have on it, and they're just sending them agent. And I guess I'd like to see the people in person myself. Would, would you be more comfortable if the uh, police department contacted the department where their other facilities are at in Wisconsin and see what kind of uh, business they've operated? If they've had any problems, well, I would like think that. that'd be something that they've done. 
We have not done that. Um, no. by the application that was submitted. Well, I think in this type of establishment, that that would be appropriate and advisable. Can we do that by council? Council, yeah. Couldn't we? To have it presented at council and have the whole, the whole council's got the vote. <coughs> anyway. yeah, might be good for those folks to come up and present their case, too. I'm so sorry. Could, uh, I, I think it would be good for them to come and present their case also, and we're going to be checking in some areas uh, where you're currently operating to see. And that, that, I, I've supplied that information when I met with the officers. So they know the, the information, who we deal with, and what agencies and things like that. I would, uh, well, we have to close the floor first. I, always, I would make a recommendation. Well, uh, let's make sure we need, let's, we opened it twice now. Let's right. make, sure we're, <laughs> make sure we're done here before we close it again. I, I stated what my concerns were, and I'd like more background check on this before I approve it. And I would like the owners to present their case, not to an agent, this is a controversial license. I'll make a motion to close the floor. Anything else? <coughs> no. Okay, all right. Motion Second. by Elder Galvin to close. Second by Elder Dorf. All in favor? Aye. Okay, I, I think we should just vote on this. We'll have uh, staff do a uh, check into the uh, other businesses, right? And uh, we can then we'll <coughs> vote on this. It'll go to council, and we'll probably have some more information that we will then share. And if, certainly if the owners they can be here, want to be here, they could be here. And uh, I'm sure this will be discussed at a little bit at council. And uh, that'll be the final say. But we'll go forward with it. You'll have a final say Tuesday like you would. So next Tuesday? Yeah. Next Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, but we'll vote here now anyway, so at least you know what you got coming forward. Okay. Didn't we Well, do we need to re-vote? I mean, we've had further discussion. Is, uh, is everybody's vote the same? Do you still wish to abstain on this <coughs> Well, it just stri strikes me that uh, there hasn't been a thorough investigation about these folks, uh, what their prior operations are. Just that nothing shows up in the seat gap or whatever. But uh, did we go beyond Wisconsin in our search? We did not. Well, I, I think you should. Was on the application I think you need to do that. They don't even live in the state. We should be at least checking that far. Well, they have another establishment in Menasha, correct? And another establishment in Menasha? Yes. yes. So and what it's actually uh, it's Calumet County is who we deal with. And where else do you have establishments besides? West Dallas. Okay. And down by Milwaukee. Anything outside the state? One, one in <coughs> Darien, Wisconsin also. I'm sorry, where? One in Darien, Wisconsin. How do you spell that? D-A-R-I-E-N. That's Walworth County. Okay. Is the law enforcement agency. Anything outside the state? No. Okay. Can no. you can you have a report for us prior to council so we can study it? You know, it comes out on our packets on what Friday. Yeah. So it have to be there by Thursday. Sure. It'll be three simple phone calls, and then go from there. All right. Okay. Thank. All right. So, do you still wish to abstain, Alder Zimmer? Oh, just Mr. Chairman, to continue, you'd have to reconsider. Just so. You if you want to reconsider, then you can revoke. Right, that's why I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to reconsider? Do you want, or do you want, or should we just stick with the vote we have? That's what I'm asking. Well, I thought we were kind of referring it back to the staff to do more research, which they will have come Tuesday, and we can then pull this item and and. But I think we should just go forward with it and have something there. Which so which whatever whatever you're feeling comfortable with is fine. Well, we've already voted. We have. Motion to reconsider. Okay, motion to reconsider. Second. Uh, second by Alder Zimmer, seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, so let's vote again. All in favor? My, fav my, my motion now would be to refer it to the uh, Common Council without a recommendation pending investigation, for the investigation by our staff. And let, this, let the Council handle it. I'm surprised there hasn't been a little more in depth. I'll second that for discussion anyway. 
Actually, I'm comfortable with that. I mean, we yeah. know it's going to get pulled either way. Yeah, it's going to get pulled. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, well. a recommendation, yeah. I'll, I'll second okay. that recommendation. All right, so we have a motion by Alder Zimmer to uh, move this forward to council without any recommendation. Uh, and we'll have further pending, information. Pending, pending further investigation. Pending further staff. Yep, I was just adding, adding. We'll have further information from staff. And uh, we'll take this up at council which was going to happen anyway. <coughs> okay, all in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that's the motion that will carry. Thank you. Yep. Uh, item number 17, consideration by a request by Alder Scandal to draft a policy or resolution or ordinance banning weapons from municipal buildings with possible <coughs> action. Okay. I have heard. Can I just ask a technical question on staff first? Sure. Uh, it always seems to me that we're kind of awkward when we're always saying what's possible action. Well, if it's on our agenda, that, that, is that a redundant thing that we're putting? I mean, you can take action on anything that's on your agenda. Um, I think you <coughs> need to have that language on there because then it um, gives notice to the public that you may take action on it. I, if you look at. But isn't that. Isn't anything on our agenda actionable? Well, I think if you look at number 20 here for a police department report on liquor license compliance checks, you can't take action on that because it doesn't have that language consideration of possible action. So that's just language to give notice to the public that you may take action on it. So it gives notice to the public to show up if they want to. Um, but this <coughs> is, uh, Don't we have a right to take action on anything that's on our agenda? I believe you need to get that's a That's not informational. It, if you give the proper notice to the public, I mean, it, we may be splitting hairs yeah. right now. But like, for instance, our, our agenda here tonight has all been noticed to the public, hasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that we don't have with possible action on. Some we do, some we don't. I think the practice right now is to make sure that we have on there that language. Is that new language? Is that is that standard for all things? Because I believe that's standard. I believe that's been on there for the most part. <coughs> it seems to me to be redundant. Well, okay. e e either way, let's uh, we can take that up. And I can look into that further. further. I guess just for information, because I, I just assume that, I mean, we don't have that on our other agendas of other committees and stuff like that. Okay. I mean, it's assumed that everything's actionable. Mm -hmm. well, you just can't that. vote on something that's <coughs> on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I'll look into that further with the law department and other committees to see okay. why so there's discrepancies. Yeah. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, consider uh, item 17. I uh, did hear from a state representative who I've been working with on this. Um, he had his staff look into it and uh, his staff kind of concurred with our legal department uh, about the, uh, uh, it becomes an all or nothing uh, deal and that uh, uh, he had talked to some of his other, other uh, elected officials, uh, some of his peers, and there did not seem to be any interest in changing the legislation as it now stands. So uh, I do, however, um, wonder a couple of things. And one is if we made it a policy. <coughs> <coughs> that uh, it was simply uh, banning <coughs> open carrying of weapons and the policy was if you carry openly carry a weapon in you would be asked to leave if you refuse to leave you'd be escorted out rather than an ordinance rather than an ordinance hmm. I know I'm, I'm trying to, I know I know I know uh, if if that if that did go to court if someone did uh, uh, take us to task on that policy. Mm -hmm. Is it just a reversal of policy or can they sue for damages? Well, off the top of my head, it would seem like your policy is a substitute for an ordinance and it's right. acting like an ordinance. So, I mean, I'll look into that, but I, I do think that there's language out there saying that you can't just call something a, a policy when it's acting like an ordinance. But I'll look into that. Okay. So what? You'd be denying them access to the government because they're not following the policy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I still think the state statute would supersede that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a there's a case on directly on point on that, and I'll look for that and get that to you. Okay. Take a motion to hold. Well, uh, well, I don't mind holding this to. to well, I don't. Know, I, I really want to. I guess I'll be quiet. I'll just reverse it. Well, it, it, I mean, if he's going to check, if staff is going to check, it makes, to me, it's, I mean, we, I think we'd be spinning our wheels to have a discussion now about it until he can come back and say. All right, well, I'll, I've got another possibility that they checked on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Uh, it, it, at state capitol, uh, offices uh, can post, right? Yeah. Uh, is it possible that we simply post for every room? In the city hall, that uh, uh, an ordinance or policy of uh, banning open carrying of weapons. I'll look into that. I mean, I'm familiar with it. Um, I think the offices are treated as kind of like their own little um, space, property yeah. space, and that's why I think they can do it. But I'll look into that as well. Okay. <laughs> you better look into where the hallways concluded that. I mean, that well, that would that would leave the that would I think that would be the technicality that would allow us to do it if it's doable. Is that the hallways would be open? I don't know. Otherwise, it's the same as banning the old building. So then people would just stand in the doorway. Well, you'd have to, you know. And well, and <coughs> if it's an individual, like if it was my office, and I say yes or no, fine. But how do you treat <coughs> like this room? Right. Where I guess you're the chair, but, but and the mayor's always. in charge. Of, yeah, not always. So I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I, I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to find you're a way through this dilemma. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, and that one might be a bit of a stretch, but I still like that. I'm, I'm leaving no stone unturned. I really believe in the compromise. I really think it's something to, to do. Uh, but it, uh, uh, as long as there's a possibility, and, it, yeah, and I, I'd like to give, a sh give it a whack, a whack the mole. What makes that one difficult is that the Wisconsin Supreme Court is in the Capitol, and that's one of the biggest reasons why you can't open carry in some areas. So they have like the judiciary branch and the legislative branch, and that's why I think they give them the option to post in the legislative branch. <coughs> okay. That's my thought. Right. <coughs> right. Well, it's mainly the, that first one that I was mm -hmm. hanging my hat on, but uh, if you just give it a, the other one a cursory peek. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there are people here who uh, may wish to speak on this. Do we wish to open the floor? I'm, I'm not eager to do that. No, no. not either. I mean, let's we let's wait till we actually have a decision from staff, and then they can address that. Otherwise, we're just going to have information from staff. What's that? Information. information. Right. From right staff. Yes. Not decision. Right, because right. otherwise, if, if, well, I mean, yeah, their decision. But otherwise, if we open the floor now, it's just going to be the usual pro-gun, anti-gun. And, I mean, we've heard it all. I'd rather see it addressed if we have, when, once we have a, a <coughs> information from staff so we can make a more informed decision where we want to go. Well, how do you feel about that, Alderman? Any? Uh, well, I I, made, I started to make a motion, but I decided that I would let you make the motions that you want. So I, I thought we'd just hold it till we get our further information. All right. Well, uh, I'll make the motion to, to hold one more uh, time. Second. Second, uh, second by Alder Dorf. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, we're holding again. Sorry, right, Evans. Uh, yep. Yeah. Item number 18, consideration was possible action on renewal <coughs> applications for various beer and liquor licenses for the 2017-18 license year. It's attached. Motion to approve by Alder Zimmer. No. Motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, that was nope. Zimmer. That was Vizima. Yeah, oh. He threw his voice. He, he did it. throw yeah, his yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were truths that we didn't at one time. That's very scary. Okay. Did you second? No. All second. A uh, motion by Alder uh, Zimmer, seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Uh, yep, 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 well, we're not done yet. Okay. I don't think she's here anymore, though. Oh, okay. Uh, 19. Uh, consideration with possible action on request by Alder Nenig on behalf of Dave Nichols, owner of Bar Nick's Bar Co., to discuss concerns regarding liquor licenses and city procedures. Um, I don't know that we need to. Uh, do that. I don't think uh, uh, I'd like to. Mr. Nichols is interested in pursuing this anymore. Um, Move to receive a place on file. Move to receive a place on file by Elder Dorf. Second. Second by Elder Galvin. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is passes. Item number 20 Police Department <coughs> Report on Liquor License Compliance Checks. Yeah, so I hand those with the uh, colored police department uh, logo on top. Very pretty. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's just an update of what the uh, community police have done in the past uh, three months, starting March 20th, ending on May 31st. Uh, we used uh, police department employees that were under the age of 21 and uh, sent them into taverns to do compliance checks to make sure that the uh, licensees were following the rules. Uh, our uh, employees were age 19, 20, and 21. And of the uh, 239 licensed establishments in Green Bay, 130 of them were checked, just over uh, 50, well, 58 percent. Uh, of the 138 that were checked, 17 of them failed, which is a 12 percent failure rate. Uh, shortly after that, we rechecked the failures, all of them, all of 100 of them. And of the original 17 failures, only uh, only one had failed a second time. So in the bottom half of the uh, form are all the establishments that have failed during uh, this compliance check uh, with special notation on the Lombardi Express, uh, 1828 South Ashland. That was the uh, agency that uh, failed, failed twice. What happens to them now that they failed twice? They've been cited appropriately uh, on each failure. Obviously it goes to the judicial system. There was uh, talk in the past that the uh, committee wanted to have those uh, establishments <coughs> uh, brought forward. So um, this is why we're bringing this information to your attention, and if the committee wishes to bring it forward. Well, when, the, when, when there was a failure on, on any of these, what was the department's uh, process after they were cited? I mean, did they, the officers, community police, anybody reach out to the, the, the owners or the management? On some of them they did. I, I can't say that that happened on all of them. Uh, but uh, all the owners were, as policy, were cited as well uh, for allowing the uh, violation to occur in addition to the uh, actual employee that did cause the violation. Sure. And with the Lombardi Express, have we reached out to them? or I believe the community police in that area uh, did reach out to them and expressed the concern that took place. Uh, Do you know what kind of feedback we got from them at all? Fortunately, I did not. Okay. Um, I would ask just in the future when, you, you know, when we have this, no, I mean, is, is it a failure of management? Is it a failure of the employee? Uh, is it an attitude issue that they don't care? Or is it that someone just made a mistake and they learned from that and that's not going to reoccur? I guess uh, that would help me uh, make a decision on whether I want to, you know, review their license or anything else like that. So that concludes my report. And is this, are you guys done checking now, or is this like a, every year you're going to get out and hit some more? Or? We're done for this period, uh, and we'll, we'll continue out throughout the, throughout the year, uh, hoping to get some of the other age, uh, applicants that we didn't get this time. Um, I did note that we did uh, mainly focus on the uh, convenience stores and uh, bars, uh, and a little bit of the restaurants, but some of the restaurants we felt uh, we didn't uh, need to uh, mm -hmm. pursue that much. So this will be a, an ongoing uh, process throughout the year. Is going to go to Lambeau Field? <laughs> <laughs> Only 10 days a year. <laughs> Trouble maker. Yeah. What about eight of these at the downtown area? Um, For the first time. They passed the second time. Which really are. Don't all these establishments so I, I suppose some of them don't have uh, ID readers, smaller operators. 
Right. I mean, I just look at some of these that are such small operations that and they didn't check the people that come in, the few people that come in. I've got a feeling uh, some of these establishments, from looking at it, probably don't get a lot of uh, young people coming in. You know, as a, some of them are restaurants, and I don't think you find real young people going into restaurants and trying to obtain alcohol illegally, as opposed to kids going into a liquor store or a convenience store and trying to get a case of beer for a, for a party that night or something like that. But you know, on the second page, it's all restaurants. And not all, I guess, but there's a number of them. It's right. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes say, you know, big establishments, they, they have the safeguards in place, but they, they have so many people that sometimes somebody can sneak by, you know. The small ones, you, you feel that like they shouldn't fail at all because they're run by the owners. And, right. And this is obviously going to be a wake-up call for them. Because I think they all understand that they could lose their license if there's uh, repeated offenses, correct? Correct, yeah. And I, I'd just like to note that the one at 952 West Mason that we had some controversy about that we didn't give them their right to sell beer, I mean to, to sell liquor, only beer, and they, pro they kind of protested up and down that, you know, they had all their people that were there all the time. They put in a lot of hours, and the owners are there doing it all, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If I remember right, I think I received an email on this that says that they actually got two violations. They, they served somebody underage, and they also did not have a licensed uh, person that was authorized to sell, sell, sell beer. What you may be referring to is uh, two citations that were issued, uh, one to the actual um, server and one to the actual owner. Yes. Um, unfortunately, the uh, listing that I have is only for 2017 liquor, liquor violations, so if that would have occurred, say, December of 16, um, that might be the confusion or the email that you might be referring to. Well, what, what, what does it say there? Is there two, were there two tickets given? One was they didn't have a, a licensed <coughs> Correct. Operator. And the other was that they served an underage person. Correct. And they sold to an underage person. So, I mean, and, and that's the neither of the people were jumping up and down and, you know, white, was being almost discriminated against and all this sort of thing. And uh, then in just a couple months, and all of a sudden we find out they don't even have a licensed operators operating the facility. And, yet, you know, they all come up and tell you how they're, you know, I might not say only these folks, but there is others that also do that. And you see, then the violation comes just with the, we only started doing some compliance checks here now, and they're, they're full, the apples are falling out of the tree rather rapidly. Well, they, they failed once, they passed the second time. So, but, yeah, they failed once. You're right. Okay, well. Uh, do, we, do we need to make a motion on that, or I guess just receive and place on the file? I'd, I'd like to make a motion to receive and place the file, but also instruct the police department to uh, continue their work. Continue their work, but report back to us in six months. So, if they've been doing any more checks or anything else, I'd like to know about that on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be every month. I, I know I it's time are, to this, is a, this is essential to keeping a good operator. Absolutely. Because if we go too many years without a compliance checks and suddenly people get soft on it. And I, and I guess I would ask that every time there's a failure that, I mean, if it's like a first time, that someone, usually it's community police officers, meet with the uh, management to, uh, you know, make sure these people understand that uh, their license could be pulled and that they need to make some changes if that's what needs to be done. Yeah, we can definitely make that known. Uh, it's, it's not just the CPs that, uh, do these type of checks right. can be a regular approach or Right. Well, I know sometimes, but everybody. those are the guys that usually can follow up uh, during the daytime, say when the owners are there or something like that. Correct. That can be done. Okay. All, all these folks have been cited and paying these fines, etc. Okay, receiving place on file. And, and, uh, and did you want to modify that, that they report back to us again in six months? Yes, please. Sure. So, 
motion. Copy. Motion by Alder Zimmer. Second. Second by Alder Dorf. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> that passes. We are on to 21. We stuck 21 in. Uh, application for commercial quadricycle license by Foxy Peddler LLC staff. No objections. Oh, excuse me. Yes, maybe I do have a few comments on <laughs> it. Um, I don't know if do you want to say it or... Go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I think um, the application um, was, I think, filed on last Friday. Um, I do believe that the individual needs to submit the insurance on file with our risk management department and also meet with the police department to go over the inspection for the quadricycle and also approve the routes. Which we got right here. Yeah. yeah. Um, my question is, is he operating this, as I understand this, as a separate business from Keggers? I think that would have to be asked. We could, oh, you okay. Can. Oh, motion open before. Second. Well, for, anything more from staff? Uh, at some point, I, when it comes to the uh, approval of the road, I would have a few concerns of some of these maps and the road that were taken. And uh, like that. Okay, motion to open the floor by Alder Galvin. Second. Thank you, Alder Dorf. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. Please state your name and address. Uh, Will Liebergen, um, operating business at 231 North Broadway, in Wisconsin, 54303. So, Will, you're, you're offering this as a separate entity from Keggers? Yeah, and insurance reasons, I have to have a separate entity. Sure. And will you be using Keggers as the home base, though? Yeah, it'll be the, start, the starting and stopping okay. point. Yeah. Starting right. and returning point. I yeah. imagine that's what they do down in the other communities yeah. and that kind of stuff. All right. And uh, how many units are you going to be operating? Just one this summer. Hopefully bring more next summer. Okay. So you're the first one. Huh? Mm -hmm. Guinea pig for everybody? It's been a pioneer. Pioneering journey. That was it's been almost a year and a half. Well, since I first brought it to this committee, almost two and a half or three. Yeah. Okay. But with, the, with this individual group, yeah, probably sure. a good nine months. All right. And you've got arrangements with <coughs> your staff to get all this other paperwork. I have insurance. We just want to, it's one of those cart before the horse type of things. With the you have to have it completed before insurance will sign off on it. They literally need a picture of it. Um, I just talked with the insurance company today. They're going to be uh, writing policy starting July 1st. Um, and so then I can get that information to, to the city. So, oh, so you can't get the policy until we approve it? No, you can't get the, I couldn't get the policy on it until I actually have a bike completed. And the bike is right now being completed. And it's okay. going to be delivered the first week of July. So I have to have the bike completed before I could, before insurance will essentially make sure to confirm that there's seat belts and seat backs on it and the other safety equipment is on it. Seat belts? Yes, there's seat belts and seat backs on this one. Oh, wow. Okay. And a horse? And a horse, horse before the cart yeah. before the it's, horse? It, it, it's, it would be great if I could have had it delivered in like February, sure. March. It just we got pushed back. I wanted to confirm that the city was going to pass the ordinance before I confirmed buying sure. one. And then we ended up getting pushed back just on build time. So, um, But the insurance will be provided uh, policy written July 1st, and uh, I can provide that to the city. Okay, because we can't approve it till. Staff approves it. That's correct. All right. Okay. You, you understand our dilemma there? Yeah. Because that's getting the cart way too and far. And far okay. Here. I, I, I guess I, when I had asked a couple questions, it was so how are we going to do okay. Again, I, I sometimes make the motion approved with the approval of proper authorities that they, it, it isn't yeah. approved until they approve it. Can we do it like that? So if so we, we approve it, sure. if we do it like that, July 1st, you get the policy, you come in. Yep. And then sometime here, people yep, are the council. Yep. Because July 1st means it won't go until the July council meeting, which means you can't operate till Yeah, then. that's that's why I'm hoping to get approval on let, this. No, wait. Oh, I, no, no, I'm sorry. Wait. Well, I think I'm wrong. So if okay. we do it like we'll Alder like is suggesting, yeah. right. once he gets everything done, then it's automatically approved. And, and council can, can pick approve it, up it as soon as all that stuff's right. right. And council can approve it as such. Right. In June. Okay. In June. As far as the routes went, I thought it was that I brought the routes to you guys and then I'm approved. And the initial routes were approved. I think it was subsequential routes were going to be approved by city if I had like a temporary route. There, there was a change to the ordinance where we were going to have the routes approved by PNW or maybe in the traffic yeah, committee. I, I thought it was, uh, but it got changed to the routes will be approved by the police department. That was okay. So all routes starting the beginning routes, everything. Okay. And then they're also though just 
heads up that if anyone was wanting to operate one of these, you need to have an individual who has an operator's license to operate the, the commercial quadricycle. They have to have a lot special license. Yes. Kind of like a cab driver's yep. license. Exactly. So you have anyone in yeah, place? I, I have me and two other people that are going to be oper licensed operators. And that we can just get approved like through this, according to the application, right through the police department. Okay. Mm -hmm. What well, way? There's a background checks. There's numerous things. Right. Yeah. They'll do that. Yeah. So they don't have to come to us. No. No. Unless there's a, a, a glitch. Right. Yeah. Okay. Then they can appeal. Yeah. And they have to have a driver's license, right? Yeah. Uh, number, background check, a whole bunch <coughs> of other. And they can't be drinking ours. That will. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> my insurance. My, and the insurance is pretty strict on it too. I mean, you guys are uh, ultimate authority, but the insurance is. I can't even operate without insurance, so I don't want to play any games with insurance. Okay. There's a, there's only a couple insurance people that insure these around the world, so. All right. And I'll second Alderman Simmons' motion. Okay, Alderman Simmons' motion is to approve <coughs> pending uh, proper authority. Proper authority. All proper. All authority. proper authorities, and that is second by Alder Galvin. Any further discussion? Oh, we didn't close the floor. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Anything else you care to add? Um, no, just uh, just touch base with the police department about this. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Move to close. Oh, oh, oh. You're good. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you for your time on on, on, on this project. This Thanks. Good luck. Thanks for working. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, motion by Alder Dorf to close the floor. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we have a motion by Alder Zimmer to approve pending approval by all the proper authorities. Seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Yeah. But just wait. Oh. Uh, I just want to make sure that Will understands and the council has to be approved this. Well, yeah, yeah, everything. This yeah. is just a yeah. recommend. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Two stable feet. Not right. just look yep. Yep. Captain yep. Florence mentioned he'd like to have some input on the routes before yep. we voted. Captain Florence. Yeah. No, no, he, he's going to be meeting the. Oh, you're not. You don't. That's going to be anymore. part of the approval of the proper authorities that, of the motion. That's not what he said. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you I just gave him the right to. It has to be approved by the police. The route. So. All right. No you don't need to do that right now, did you? Not right now. No, this is something I'll, we'll work with. Okay. Yeah. I guess the understanding would be then that the police department <coughs> has authority from the PW to deny some of his routes. And that would be acceptable, I guess, too. Right. Then, well, then he can appeal it if okay. that happens. That's I'm, right. I'm hoping the police will. They can work it out, I'm sure. I hope. I should say. A lot of pressure. Yeah. Right. Okay. You may have yeah. it first. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we're squared away here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. All right, well, now we just have item number 22, which we put off. Uh, I don't believe she's it's here. It's uh, a man. It's a Brandon. Number four. Wait, uh, it was no. number, number seven. seven. Brandon DeBear, number seven. That's a guy. It's a guy. Oh, uh, I think Brandon's. Oh, Brandon? Yeah. Are you Brandon? No. No. Well, He's then been here all along. Then never mind. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, so. Number seven, uh, number 22, consideration of possible action on appeal by Brandon DeBear to the denial of his operator license application. Staff has said no. Uh, take a motion move from. Move to receive and place on file. Move to receive and place on file by Alder Zimmer. Yep. Second by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There we go. And <coughs> I'll take a motion. To adjourn. To adjourn by Elder Zimmer. Second. Second by Elder Bar. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you just do that? Yep. We're adjourned. Yep. Oh, Mr. Wilkett. I thought that